Good day everyone. So we are still here in the fundamentals of conduction. So one of our main topic here is regarding the one-dimensional heat conduction process. So for the equation for one-dimensional uh, heat conduction equation, we can obtain we can, can we can obtain this from the general equation, like what we have said last time, and we can disregard the other terms, like for example the two coordinates, the the x and y, and then we can retain retain the z, um, uh, the z terms, okay? Or we can eliminate the uh, y and z and only retain the x terms. So just like that. That is for the one-dimensional heat conduction problem. So the summary of the one-dimensional uh, steady state equation is I've already shown uh, that last time in the, uh, I mean, I have uh, provided a uh, table for the summary of the, uh, the one-dimensional uh, equation, right? So, uh, So, under this uh, one-dimensional heat conduction problem, say we have um, uh, viewed this in terms of the differential equation approach. Differential equation approach. Okay. So, in this section, we will gonna demonstrate how to obtain solution to the conduction equation derived in our uh, preceding sections okay so say we have a, a plain wall with no heat generation with no heat gen okay so remember this so this is now our condition with no heat gen okay so for steady state with no heat generation we can uh, from our um, equation last time so we have this the uh, uh, second derivative of t with respect to x plus our heat gen is equal to our uh, 1 over the thermal uh, diffusivity over 1 or uh, I mean uh, the uh, uh, derivative of temperature with respect to time right so if we have no um no heat gen and our uh, equation is in stead state then we can now say that these two terms these two terms here is equal to zero it's equal to zero as well as this part here equal to zero okay so we've only remain on this part okay so therefore if we have this uh, certain condition then um, we can say that uh, the second derivative of temperature with respect to x is equal to zero since this is zero and this is zero so uh, we have this now uh, equation right so yeah so, integrating this um, ordinary differential equation twice, uh, it will yield us to the temperature distribution. So, if we will gonna, since we are um, on the uh, second derivative, so, so we are in the second derivative, so we, we need to integrate this, integrate this twice, right? Okay, so integrating this twice so we have a uh, double integration now okay okay so first if we gonna integrate it so it will yield to um, uh, dt over dx right plus c and plus c pala and uh, our uh, we need to integrate it more so if we integrate this so we have t over dx plus c one and then it will yield two this term here is um, t 
it's a function of uh, x. plus c1x plus c2, right? Okay. So, we can also express this as uh, t is a function of x is equal to c1x plus c2, right? Okay. So, if we have now this um, solution for our given DE, for the given higher order DE, which is, um, so this is now our solution for that certain given DE. And then if there is, uh, I mean, if there are two boundary conditions, say, <coughs> say, uh, at x is equal to zero, our, uh, temperature is equal to T1 and at x is equal to a, a certain uh, length then we can now have our T temperature at that uh, position is equal to T2 okay for example um, we have this thin wall then say at x is equal to 0 our uh, T here is equal to T1 and at uh, this point here we call it X is equal to L and our uh, T at L here is equal to uh, T2 T2 see see that is our um, boundary conditions we have two boundary conditions there and applying these boundary conditions to our um, above um, general solution we can get dx is equal to t2 minus t1 all over lx plus t1 okay so since we have a um, uh, two conditions and two unknowns the c1 and c2 um, by uh, following your uh, I mean, uh, by doing some mathematics at the above equation, we can get the um, we can get this um, general solution. Okay, so we can have this solution. What else? So from this equation, we can see that the um, temperature uh, distribution is linear. So taking the derivative, we get the um, dt over uh, dx is equal to all over L and the derivative of X is just this uh, part here plus the derivative of this in turn uh, with respect to X is just zero okay so we have here this uh, equation what else and then sub substituting to the uh, Fourier equation we can solve for the heat flux or heat transfer rate so we have a Q is equal to negative k a our uh, dt dx which is t2 minus t1 all over l i'm sorry so generally this is now our um, um our particular solution for this is specific condition okay so that is for the plane wall with no heat generation. Now, if we have a plane wall with heat generation, so with heat generation, and going back in our uh, equation, okay, so this is our uh, general um, 1D equation, right? And we have cancelled this out last time because uh, our um, condition is that our plane wall has uh, no heat gen. But if we have heat gen, then we will retain this part. Now, um, going back, we now have the, um, the, uh, the second derivative of t with respect to x plus t1 
the heat gen all over uh, k is equal to um, let uh, cancel this out now because uh, we are only dealing now with uh, some heat generation okay so let's assume that this is a uh, negligible or zero or uh, there's no part okay so and if we have this only uh, uh, I mean only condition here then we can now um, um, do some um, uh, what they call this do some um, algebraic uh, uh, simplification and we can say that if we multiply uh, k and divide uh, I mean and if we multiply k in this uh, both terms we can now have k squared t over d squared plus g dot is equal to zero now if we gonna move this g on the other side then it will now become negative so we have k d squared t over d x squared is equal to negative g dot k so uh, once again um um we treat the uh, this right side as zero because if the thermal conductivity is constant and the heat generation is uniform then the general equation would be this one okay so now this is now our general equation okay so doing the um, um, same thing uh, the uh, since we are uh, in the uh, uh, second order, so we need to uh, integrate twice. So integrating uh, twice will yield us to um, this uh, solution. Okay, so we have this now solution. Negative Q gen x squared all over 2k plus C1x plus C2. Okay. So, after this, if we have um, two boundary conditions, say at x is equal to 0, our t is equal to t1, and at x is equal to l, our tl is equal to t2. Okay. So, uh, substituting these um, conditions, conditions to our... Um, uh, solution then we can now uh, solve for the value of our c1 and c2 and this will yield to our uh, particular solution which have this condition is equal to uh, negative uh, the heat generation this is g by the way all over 2k l squared plus t2 minus t1 all over l plus uh, heat gen to k x plus t1 okay so observe that this equation the uh, temperature distribution is no longer linear okay so last time or the uh, linear distribution we have the t1 and we have this t2 here but for the nonlinear distribution we can uh, say that uh, maybe we have something like this so yeah that's it so uh, the summarize for um, i mean for the summary for the procedures for solving using uh, the differential equation approach is uh, first we need to write down the uh, governing de need to write down the governing DE then apply the um, the uh, boundary conditions or the in and initial conditions then solve for the um, uh, temperature distribution as a function then differentiate the temperature to obtain um, dt over dx and then uh, uh, until you come up with your um, with your uh, general solution then uh, um, uh, apply the uh, boundary condition and solve and solve for the heat flux.